Hi everybody joining Virtual Badge Summit. I'm Anna and today I want to talk to you about Open Recognition is for Everybody, a feminist practice for more equal workplaces. But before I get into that, let me introduce myself and who I work with. So I work with We Are Open Co-op and we work at on projects at the intersection of community, technology and learning and do loads of awesome projects there. And I am myself, I'm a media educator, which means I'm not just interested in technology and media itself, but also the way we interact and uh, approach them. And uh, not just that, but I'm also very interested in feminist pedagogy, which informs almost everything I do and uh, might have something to do with this talk as well uh, today. And... Um, yeah, let's get into it. So here are some questions that I ask myself, um, but are also kind of this agenda for today. Uh, I see my head is in the way. Let me get that out of there. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about why am I talking about this? Uh, why I think this is important? Um, then secondly, I want to talk about what feminism and especially feminism in a workspace actually is and how it looks like. Um, then I want to talk to you about what all of this has to do with open recognition. And lastly, I want to talk about how we can combine the two to maybe create more equal workspaces. And uh, now I want to add a little disclaimer as well. Now my head is in the way again. I'm sorry for that. Um, so today I'm not really talking about uh, badges as micro-credentials or other forms of making skills visible today. I know open badges are also um, used for that. Um, but I want to talk about badges and open recognition as encouragement for pro-social behaviors and as a tool to start a conversation and maybe, if possible, even for a vehicle for a system change, because this is something that um came up uh in a community call with the open recognition is for everybody community which will i which i will also introduce to you uh, uh soon and in one of these community calls dr crystal rawls uh, started asking questions um that really stuck with me like who are we making this for who's using open badges and um, who are we serving with this and what do we do if nobody adapts uh, for open badges or is using them? So um, I really want to talk about them as a vehicle for a system change and to use them as a, yeah, as a tool to, to, to get people into talking and to, to change some things around. And without further ado, let's talk about some, some of these changes. So first, let's start with the problem that I see that many others see and experience. And I uh, collected some newspaper or online newspaper headlines to, to show them to you, because I think this is like the best way to, to introduce what I'm actually talking about. So, for example, the one of the most discussed ones is the gender pay gap. And it's not just in New York, but it's also worldwide that women are the ones that earn less than men. And um, also the jobs that women occupy are mostly the underpaid ones. And uh, a good example for this is nurses or uh, other care workers. But there's also many other forms of discrimination. Um, for example, women who have kids and uh, have to take care of them as well while also working, maybe also 30 hours, 40 hours a week or something. And then there's also trans people who uh, have to face transphobia in the workplace um, and also in various other places. Uh, there's no exception. And um, of course, there's also like everywhere else, uh, a big problem, the, the racism that is still everywhere and the everyday racism that most people uh, don't realize they are actually doing it. I'm pretty sure I myself also did many racist things without even knowing it and uh, only by reflecting on them we're able to, to see that this is happening. And uh, another thing is also if you have difficulties um, with things that are considered normal in a, in a, in a workplace, uh, it's really hard for people who are, for example, the dyslexic or neurodiverse. And I bet every woman 
and also people were discriminated in other ways, which which is also something I will talk about soon, um, called intersectionality. Um, but yeah, I bet every woman or person that has been socialized as a female uh, also in this room has experienced some sort of discrimination uh, or really bad behavior. Uh, I sure did. Even a couple of weeks ago, something happened to me and it wasn't f fun and it was in the workplace. But sure, uh, happily, there was somebody I could talk to uh, and I will get to this later. And in my opinion, um, open recognition can be a tool to tackle some of these issues, uh, which gets me to the next point, because open recognition is the awareness and appreciation of talent, skills and aspirations that go beyond credentialing. And it is a more holistic approach to look at a person. And the goal of open recognition is to create a more inclusive and equi equitable system of recognition um, that's encouraging lifelong learning and create more opportunities for people to learn and uh, also develop skills throughout their lives. So this is, of course, something um, that is important for a workplace and also the future of work um, to talk about this. Um, so when I started working for We Are Open and I got introduced to open badges and open recognition, I quickly realized that this is something that has a lot of things in common with the goals of feminism. So what do I talk about when I talk about feminism and intersectionality? So most people think that feminism is angry women that yell at you and they're all always have complaints and they're super woke and they hate all men. Maybe they look like this. Um, and most people think this is what all feminism look like. And even though this is a very valid form of feminist and feminist riot, um, this is not at all what all feminism looks like. And to explain that further, uh, I want to quote uh, the brilliant Bell Hooks, who said, simply put, feminism is a movement to end sexism, sex ex sexist exploitation and oppression. And she also points out that this is a this definition means that it doesn't imply that men are the enemy, but uh, rather points out to the heart of the problem, which is that, um, which is sexism and sexist oppression. And that also means that everybody can be a sexist. Uh, also women can be. And uh, that brings me to the next layer that I want to add to this. And this is intersectionality. So Intersectionality is a concept that has been first introduced by Kimberly Crenshaw, a law professor and civil rights advocate. And uh, she has been working on this concept uh, for, for many, many years now and has been quoted a lot since then. And the, this concept describes the uh, different aspects of, the, of a person's uh, identity, like their gender or race or social class and other characteristics and they overlap and interact. And uh, as you can see in this beautiful graphic that I created, um, I call it the flower of intersectionality, that these things overlap actually. And actually it's way more nuanced than what you see here. So there's many, many more, if we call it a flower, many, many more leaves of intersectionality that are there that I can draw all out. So I put in some of the the biggest ones that are uh, that can be seen here and uh, for example like there's also a big part about being able-bodied or having a disability that also affects everything you do in your life and um, it also for example makes a difference if you're first person in your family that attends a higher education you have much more struggles if you do that uh, or um, Intersectionality recognizes that people can face uh, multiple forms of discrimination and uh, disadvantages at the same time. So, for example, a black woman might experience discrimination uh, in ways that are different from both white women and black men. 
So um, looking at this concept it helps us to understand uh, the complex the complexity of experiences and um, looking at how parts of the person's identity come together and how they affect everything they experience throughout their lives, be it in the workplace or in their free time and in school and everywhere else. And this gets me to uh, the connection I see between open recognition and feminism, because the words that I wrote down here, uh, you can see um, are terms that I think are all something that feminists want to do and want to achieve. But also I feel like many of you working in open recognition have the same goals. Also the work of people who are in open recognition um, is about advocacy or empowerment or autonomy and is trying to help people to, to build their own story and uh, represent them. So yeah, to sustain an equal workplace, it is crucial to acknowledge these nuances between identities and skills and talents of all workers. And open recognition as well as open badges are a way to help recognize differences in identities and highlight skills, aspirations and talents. And feminism's goal is to create spaces everywhere that are equally accessible for everybody and don't discriminate against certain groups and overcome many different kinds of inequalities. So this is why I think open feminist workplace recognition, to make it sound super complicated and sophisticated, as I like it, um, is something that we should all aspire. And this gets me to the next bit of my talk. So this image um, you can see here um, can have many different metaphors. I think originally it was meant to describe the way in which open badges help us to illustrate multiple career pathways. And not only the straightforward for one is the one to aspire and uh, is something that we usually have even. But I think it can also be used as a metaphor um, on how uh, a default setting of default setting of a white cisgendered male can climb the career ladder easy as that. And everybody else who has not this default setting um, has to climb different pathways and has it much harder and getting up that wall is, it's, uh, is, is hard. And um, to put it in, in gaming terms, even um, white cisgendered males are playing life on the easiest difficulty settings. I will come back to this uh, in a second and show you an article that I quoted here right now. So now I want to introduce you into some of the ideas that I have, um, but also others, um, what a workplace needs to be a feminist workplace. And I chose this gift because I don't know if you've seen this episode of The Office. Uh, I think it's called Diversity Day or something. And uh, this is a perfect example of how a workplace is not feminist. And... Um, Michael Scott like really pulled a Michael Scott there but yeah get let's get back to topic here so to have a feminist workspace um, one thing you should do is of course equal and appropriate pay so not just equal but also appropriate in a way that people who have families are able to feed them and that everybody's able to pay their rent and all these kind of things. And yeah, just like an appropriate pay, as I said. And then there is diverse leadership. Uh, this is also very important because if you just have one group of people uh, from, let's say, this flower of intersectionality in a, a leaderboard, you don't know what your workers need. And uh uh, one very great example that I read about is um, that it took a woman in leadership position to get pregnant to realize that the parking lots are way uh, are far away too far away from the 
entrance to the work. It's too exhausting for a pregnant worker to having to walk all that way. And it took a woman in a leadership position to finally re realize that. And she, she was not the first one to be pregnant at that company. Um, another one that is also really important is the work life balance. So it's uh, necessary to provide flexible work arrangements, to have parental leave and childcare assistance. And this is also actually something that starts with uh, meeting times. Like when do you have meetings? Do you have them early in the morning, late in the afternoon? Do people have to pick up their kids? Do people like to sleep in longer because their brains work like that? These are all things that you have to uh, consider. Um, another big very important thing is mentorship and support. Um, so establishing mentorship programs, uh, um, professional development opportunities, and they have to be doable for everybody. So not the not just the people who have most time uh, to work get those trainings, but also people who might have less time. But maybe you give them spare time or you give them like extra vacation days for self development. Um, there's different ways to, to approach that. Um, another one that is also very important is equal opportunities that also plays into the mentorship and support, like creating equal opportunities for people to climb up that ladder or not knock on the glass ceiling and creating everybody for everybody ways in which they can prove that they're not proved, but like show that they're valued and uh, that they can yeah proceed in their job and lastly i want to uh, talk about safe and inclusive environments um, so this is also really important like creating a safe and inclusive workplace culture that actively addresses and prevents discrimination and harassment which i can't stress enough like actively addressing and preventing discrimination and harassment um, is, I think, the most important thing and something that's overlooked a lot. Like, for example, how do you use metaphors? Are you mostly using nonviolent metaphors when you talk about something? And before we go on, I want to say that I think some of these goals uh, for a feminist workspace can be achieved by the help of open recognition and open badges. Um, so to finish this presentation off, I, of course, want to give you uh, three examples of things you can do to create a more feminist workspace, because I think this is the most important part. And um, these three things are informed by something I did for a free email course uh, on feminist uh, pedagogy. So if you're interested in that, I will show you a slide later where you can find a link to that course. And uh, these are three methods that I found um, in a paper kind of thing from some students at the Vanderbilt Center for Teaching. And they are talking about uh, what feminist pedagogy is, are a combination of our habits of the ha head, habits of the heart, and habits of the hand. And so to make it very short the habits of the head are our ways of thinking and knowing like how do we know what we know and these kind of questions and a practical example what a habit of the head in the feminist workspace can be is creating a code of conduct as soon as you bring people together if you want a if you want diverse voices to be heard and to create a safe environment um, for people uh, you need some ground rules and a code of conduct is a perfect way for that so a code of conduct can act as a guideline for your employers uh, and employees and it can help to guide through situations where discrimination is actually happening um, it gives employees assurance that they will be listened to if something happens, which is something that happened to me, which I mentioned earlier, because somebody somebody was mean to me in a very sexist way. 
and it happened in a workspace. And because the people who I was working with had a code of conduct, I had something that I could like rely on and I could quote on um, to tell people this person mistreated me, please do something about it. And it made me feel seen. It made me feel safe. And uh, it's very important to consider that for, for people you work with. Here's an example. Now my head is in the way of the URL again, but I will send you the slides as well. So if you need a, the links, you can just go into the slide deck and find it yourself. So this is the code of conduct from We Are Open. We put this on our wiki and um, wrote some things down that are important if you work with us or if we work with you, if we bring people together, if we meet in an online space, all these kind of things. Uh, if you want to read it, there is a link you can follow. And something that I want to point out again is like, if you create a code of conduct, you have to keep in mind that it doesn't magically help you have an equal workplace and everything is good and great. Uh, you also have to act upon that code of conduct and live it and uh, everybody, somebody new joins uh, the space uh, or the community or wherever you are, they have to read and understand these ground rules But because without that, there's no good use for a code of conduct. So the next thing I want to introduce um, are the habits of the heart, um, which are the values that guide us. And here we have the questions of who is in power, who are the people, who are the people in power, what are these people in power doing, do we even need people that are in power, all these kind of things. And uh, as a practical example, I uh, think the best way to do or to approach a habit of the heart is to reflect your own privileges and uh, make room for others if they, if, if needed. And also don't expect a pat on the shoulder if you make space for other people because it's just also their space. Um, Here's a little image that I found that I think is a perfect illustration for that. So reflecting on your own privileges means that you will leave your own comfort zone. And it brings me back to this flower of intersectionality. And also this is the headline for the uh, quote that I said earlier, like playing the life on the lowest difficulty setting. And the more intersections in this flower you have the more difficult your life gets actually which is sad but that's the way it is if you're interested in this article i put a link to it in the description of this slide also in the deck so you can go there and yeah there's yeah reflecting on your own privileges is something there there is no nothing that i can explain more you just have to do it and you have to do it well and don't expect the pat on the shoulder. The third thing, the habit of the hand, is where it gets interesting for all you open badges people because I think we can use open badges to encourage behaviors uh, in the team, in the workspace, in your community that allow everybody to shine. For example, badges for pro-social behaviors and other kind of things. And I have brought some examples for you. We have two from the Open Recognition is for Everybody community, uh, the one on the right corner and the one in the left bottom corner. Um, so those are the Harmony Keeper is one that you get if you um, keep the harmony within the community. And the Hofmeister I especially like because it's uh, the one that you get when you help somebody else in the community. And uh, the other two are actually ones that We Are Open created. And one is the Missed by We Are Open. And this is sort of a self-care badge, uh, so to say, because uh, you will get that badge if your colleagues at We Are Open missed you in a meeting or somewhere else because you took a vacation or a mental health day or plainly just forgot a meeting. 
and uh, then you will get this badge because yeah take care of yourself and the last one is the pick up the reins badge for people who pick up the reins and rather ask for forgiveness than for permission and just go on with a project or a thing and just do it and turn it into their own work and it wouldn't be me if i have if i had many more ideas for batches that i obviously haven't created yet but i wanted to introduce them to you um maybe you have time or more ideas to create these badges so for example obviously there would be a code of conduct badge that you could give everybody who has a code of conduct already uh, and encourage others to maybe also create one then kind of similar to the missed by we are open badge is the take of care of yourself badge also one that would that I think is really interesting is a nonviolent communication badge. It's also something that I mentioned before, talking about nonviolent metaphors. Um, how are you talking at work? How are you approaching your colleagues? And um, if you're interested in that, Laura uh, from We Are Open wrote a whole blog post about it, and I link to it in the slides description. Obviously, there would be one for the diversity, equity, and inclusion training. And uh, I want more self-issued badges uh, that other people, your colleagues or anybody else can endorse. Um, because I think this is also something that we should aspire to have more. And as a little disclaimer, obviously, somebody who has experienced discrimination their whole life and worked in the field of diversity and um they know their way around diversity, equity, and inclusion. They might not need a DEI training badge. Maybe they need the badge, but they don't need the training because they know already. So think about the way people can earn the badges too. So yeah, these are badges that I dream about. And uh, you can feel free to take these ideas and make them your own um, and create those badges and issue them to somebody who you think should have it or maybe issue them to yourself and uh, feel free to do whatever you want uh, if you have other ideas send them to me i'm very interested in what you come up with if this would have been a live session i would have run a whole workshop on finding more ideas to um, get this feminist workplace recognition started and do more with that um, but for now, this was it. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ping me anywhere, be it on LinkedIn or through the Open Recognition is for Everybody community uh, or anywhere else on the internet. Um, just talk to me and I'm happy to answer your questions or suggestions or listen to your uh, great ideas. And if you're interested in the course that I mentioned, it's called Feminism is for Everybody, Especially Educators. And it's on our Learn with uh, We Are Open site. There is a link there that you can find in the slide deck. If you're interested in joining the Open Recognition is for Everybody community, uh, there is a site, badges.community, where you find all the links concerning the community you find our wiki there, you find the Open Recognition Toolkit and all your ways around the community. And here is also an image of the community. Uh, yeah, join us, talk to me, talk to anybody. And thank you so much for listening. Bye.